Wow, it's time for another server. So I got this guy on eBay for about 100 bucks plus $30 in shipping, which really isn't too bad once I start taking a look at what I've gotten. So the big thing that sold me on this model was it came with four Sun F40 drives. I've done a video on these before. I kind of like them. They're pretty cool little guys. Um, they're basically four 100 gigs um, SATA drives all on one card with a little LSI SAS controller. And the reason I like them is, first of all, they're cheap. Second of all, they have EMLC flash, which basically means it's not going to wear out due to write endurance. Um, they're rated for, I think, some like 16 petabytes of write, something stupid. Reasonably good performance. If they're all together, you get about 2 gigs a second reads, like 1.6 write, and you get eh, a couple thousand IOPS. I think, now you get like 100k IOPS if you put them all in RAID 0. And they work with basically any system. They work with Windows, like 7 to 10, and the server versions, and basically all modern Linux distros out of the box, no additional drivers, which a lot of the older drives, like Fusion I.O. ones, don't do. They have a lot of issues of drivers and stuff like that. So I was just buying it for the drives, basically. But it's like, oh, I get a server with it. That's kind of cool. Let's go play around with the server and see what we got. So it is a Sun Server X32L. There is not much info on this guy on the internet. It seems to be quite rare, I'd say, info-wise. And there wasn't too many other specs. So I'm going to go, let's take a look at what I got. I have no idea how this came. And I'm assuming they've played with some stuff because it doesn't come with RAM. So... Definitely wasn't the working config, but um, they said it comes with two E5 2640L, so low power six core chips. Have confirmed that they do work. Came with no RAM, but from the looks of how they've opened, left the sticks open, they took it out and they were using eight sticks total. I just put two four gig sticks in for testing. Um, at the back here, we have what looks like two hard drive bays. I took out one of these blanks they had and just put an SSD in for testing. These are probably made for your boot drives. Um, but this guy actually has an interesting little adapter thingy. Here, this doesn't look like any other normal drive you'd see. This is actually a little lithium battery. Um, says, yeah, like 3.3 volts, 5.6 watt hours. So it's a tiny little um, lithium battery. And what it does is it's the battery backup cache for the RAID card. More on that in a minute. Okay, um, looking at the internal cards we have, we have these Sun F40s, two of them here. We have kind of what looks like a network card here. Let's take a closer look at this guy. And pull these, these are the weirdest PCI Express. I've never seen this sort of bracket before. Um, but there you go. This looks like a Mellanox from first look. These are QSFP ports. Um, I'm guessing this is InfiniBand. It might be 40 gig Ethernet. I have not played with those much either. Any of them. Um, in the middle, we have a SAS expander. Um, and then we have two more Sun F40s. And then we have that RAID card. So that's a lot of goodies in here, actually. Um, six slots full. Another weird thing with the slots are... There's, there's a bit of a gap. There's like three-eighths of an inch basically gap. So you can't put dual slot cards in here. Um, must have been for better airflow. I kind of, it would have been cool though if they would have put, you probably could have put four on each side and had eight cards, but they probably needed to do it for the airflow because all these cards can use like 25 watts. So there was like another 150 watts of heat just from these cards. Let's go take a closer look at all of these different models of cards we have. Ah, uh, the old friend, the Sun F40. So this is an LSI HBA. Under each of these is two um, SSDs. I did a teardown in my previous video and went a lot more in depth on it. They have enough capacitors to protect it from power outages, um, be able to flush any DRAM that's on it. Um, yeah, they're, I'll go more into the performance in a little bit, but they're kind of cool little drives. I've liked working with them and for used enterprise grade SSDs that fit in PCI Express slots. They're kind of my favorite. I'd really picked them over the um, Fusion I.O. ones, which get cheap, relatively common. But after playing with some of the NVMe ones, those are kind of my new favorite because NVMe works in basically everything, has a lot faster now, has a lot less overhead. You don't have to deal with four drives. It's kind of a better way and no more efficient because these chips use quite a bit of power. Here's an interesting look right now on the um, inside of the case panel. 
So this shows the three main configurations it looks like. So you got the eight hard drives on the front where it just plugs directly into this HBA or RAID card. The next one of 12 hard drives, there's an HBA or RAID card, plugs into a SAS expander with three um, back planes here, 12 drives. This is what I have and another two more in the back. And then the 24 drives uses these little two and a half inch drives, uses all the SAS connectors and you still get two more in the back. Taking a look at my actual system, this is what I have. So you can see two of these cables runs from this card back here. Um, three of these guys goes to the front. And then these two little SATA connectors goes back to those drives I was showing you a bit ago. And this whole contraption is just held in with these four plastic push pins that they seem to like in this server. Under here, the SAS expander connects via this big, pretty high density connector. I'm not sure what they're all using it for. Um, I don't think there's any actual data going through it. To my knowledge, it's pretty much just a dumb little carrier for signals. There's two USB ports in it, and it came with one little USB drive here. It says four gigs. I'm guessing this shipped using some sort of hypervisor or something out of the box. This little add-on card is a um, LSI 9261AI. So here's the two SAS ports on the back. The actual ch chip is under here. It looks like this guy's where the battery would normally go. And then you can't really see it here, but there's DRAM under here that it uses as the cache. Moving a bit farther towards the front of the case, we find two big heat sinks for the CPUs and this plastic air shroud, which routes air from the four fans in the front around the CPU heat sinks and memory. Um, they got blanks in here. You see this little channel where they put all the SAS cables through. A big, it's almost this big thing here almost looks like kind of like the QPI link between the CPUs. Interesting, never seen a board do this externally before. Moving even farther forward, this lifts open and we can see the fans here. Super cool design, I'd say. And you can just unscrew these fans, they are hot swappable. Pop out when you give them a bit of force and they are Nidec Ultra Flow fans rated for 1.96 amps at 12 volts and they are contra rotating. So you can see there's two different sets of blades in these guys. Last thing to look at is power supplies. It comes with two little guys here. These units are made by Delta Electronics and they are 1000 watt power supplies. I was a bit curious what's inside these power supplies seeing they're pretty darn dense being 1000 watts and yep, they are quite dense. Little fan here, main heat sink here, um, components and if you're looking at the front end, it's just solid parts and it boards on all sides. One interesting thing with this is um, PCIe slot wise, there's a 16 and then an 88888. All the 8s have closed back, so you can't put 16x cards there, unfortunately. Even then, looking at the amount of PCI Express lanes we have available, that's pretty insane, especially for an older system. Here's a look at the front backplane. I unfortunately don't have any trays with this server. I'm doing a quick eBay search. They're roughly uh, $100 to get all the trays, but I'm tempted to do it if I'm actually going to use this guy. But the backplane design, I actually really like how they've done this. It's three separate ones, each gets their own connector. The SAS expander's in the back, unlike most servers, which put it in the front in here, which means you get a lot more airflow through here than most servers do, because most servers just try to punch holes in the circuit board where they can. Whereas this one, like, there's pretty huge gaps there. One funky little thing is these little light pipes they use for the things. It's kind of weird seeing this kind of bent plastic they use. Overall, I'd say I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I don't think it's a perfect server design, I'd say. Um, there's a few things I think they could have done better, in my opinion. A few things they could have done better I would have liked would have been 12 DIMMs per CPU, so a total of 24 DIMMs. I know that kind of makes you can't put this little channel here, but that'd be kind of cool to me if they would have done it. Um, I think like the fan hot swap mechanisms could definitely be improved. Um, I wish they would have put a few more slots and yet changed the spacing. I know that hurts cooling, but this is definitely a lot better built than a lot of the white box servers out there. And also when I've been playing in the BIOS and stuff, this isn't super proprietary in how they do stuff. You can run any OS you want on it. It works like any x86 system you'd expect would. And Sun and Oracle, I say, wouldn't be the most known for plug and play stuff. Also, this is, seems to be a quite underrated or a quite unpopular system. And the interesting thing with these is if you look on eBay, they're normally like a grand or something. Ridiculously expensive, but they sometimes pop up really cheap. With these kind of special ones, if they pop up cheap, buy them. They're probably good buys. I've done that a few times and been quite happy. But um, don't buy these for the ridiculous prices. 
I'd probably stay at, sell, say, go like R720 if you can. It's still generally better and much more common, but it is an interesting one. Also, definitely built for the, seems like storage server market is the um, specialty. A lot of storage focus, especially with all these drives and the super small OS. My guess is they were using it as some sort of like network storage or something like that. Or maybe some sort of, this is part of a um, SAN appliance. I wouldn't be surprised if this was actually designed with ZFS in mind, knowing that Oracle made ZFS. I'd be interested to see how they would have laid it out software-wise in ZFS. Now I'm SSH'd into the system. Here's HTOP on it. Yeah, it has 24 threads as I'd expect. Um, LSBOK -okay shows me all the drives. I just set up a giant MD array. That's a RAID 0 on 16 drives. So if I do cat slash prog slash MD stat, I can see it's a giant RAID 0. Um, performance testing really wasn't that impressive to me when I did it. Um, and I'm guessing most of it is just single threaded limits. Um, so if I just do like a rsync and test, this is just a random file, just completely random data. Um, and then I do dash P to show progress and speed. And then I just put it into another bogus file. Um, it's really not that fast. It's sitting at like 224. I think CP gets to about 300 some. If I do IO stat dash um, M1, I can see the speed on here is fairly low um and yeah cpu usage that single threaded limit and all the other tests i try doing just hits that single threaded limit pretty darn quickly um which is kind of unfortunate unfortunate thing is i don't have any systems that are much better single threaded and can put all these ssds in it to really push them but the next best thing i can probably do is using fio yeah, so I seem to be getting roughly 200, 150,000 IOPS out of this. Random reads, not bad, not incredible, and that's with some pretty darn deep QDEPs. If I want to just do a single job, single QDEPth of one, I can do that. And once it finishes loading, I can see that the actual QDEPth, well, it won't show me here an IOSTAT, but it is, and I'm getting about 11,000 IOPS which is about what's expected from a drive like this. The one other test I'm gonna run is just sequential. So it's just fully sequential, big files. See how big you can get the read speeds up. A lot of processes. Oh, there you go. There I got the big number, 6.2 gigabytes per second. And that's about what I expect with these drives, about two gigabytes per second each. So add a little bit of overhead and what six. Um, yeah, that's a lot of data. So just looking at IO stat, 5.6, 5.7, reading about 380 from each of them. Yeah, that's a lot of data though. That's, it's not bad. Now I've put um, Windows Server 2019 on here and I'm gonna play with that a little bit and do some testing. I've already tried a different um, RAID configs. On the bottom left here is a single drive. So I'm reading at about, yeah, 500 megs a second. This is a SATA drive um it doesn't have like the write caching so it's just going straight to mlc which is why the um writes are relatively slow and also it's just not really optimized for that um and it's also just an older drive and then i did two other raid zeros amongst all the drives so first is a 16 drive um disk management raid so this is just using right click span disks or in disk management and this one's using storage spaces in windows um, surprisingly enough, I got better performance than Linux. My guess is that's just due to tweaking and a bit more configuration in Linux and I could have gotten this in FIO. Um, yeah, look at those sequential reads, about 7.7 .7 gigabytes per second. That's pretty, that's about theoretical max. So that's pretty cool. I'm actually getting those numbers. Um, QDepth 1 doesn't go up as expected. And the big thing I couldn't hit on Linux is IOPS. I was getting with disk management raid almost half a million IOPS. I don't know exactly how much that is due to um, caching and stuff. I haven't played too much with these, but these numbers seem about right. Now the question is, using it is a pain in the butt. I was, let's put Hyper-V on here and have some fun. Tried a few VMs. It's pretty um, good. Now, the only thing I will notice with VMs is it's darn hard to fill it doing normal applications like installing Windows. It's pretty darn hard to fill that IO, though in VMs with Hyper-V, that's the VM performance. That is darn close to native. Um, Q depth one is a bit lower, but like 7.7 .7 versus 7.5 gigabytes per second in a VM is not bad at all. But one thing I will notice is since this is a relatively low per clock of single threaded performance um, on the chip, 
A lot of things that like single-sided performance, like, you know, Windows Update seems to, just are darn slow and you can't max out the disk. So like, I have a two VMs running updates right now and I'm barely touching disk IO. And I'm barely touching CPU usage total, it's just a couple of cores are getting hit. Um, yeah, I could put higher end chips in here, but that's just the current config. Um, some other workloads I played with was just 7-zip decompression. So I just, you know, threw a hard drive image on here and I'm going to just say, oh, here's a little HDD. I'm going to right click 7-zip, extract HDD, and I'm going to just say override everything. And we can see this does basically max it out and it goes at about, I think, 500 megs a second. It's just basically reading it and rewriting the data. Not too bad, but not insane. That's not as insane. It does max out disk usage. Another thing I wanted to look at was just having some fun with seeing what it would report. Um, first of all, is just hardware info. Um, opening up hardware info, you actually get quite a bit of stuff in hardware info. Um, so it will show you like all the CPU info, all the disks, and it also reports the um, Oracle or Sun um, management unit. Oh, well, that's odd. It actually doesn't show me the info, but it used to show me like the info from the ILOM where it would show me like how much power the fans are using and other components, but it seemed a bit too rounded. So it's either rounding it off or not correct. Another fun thing here is looking at all these drives. First of all, there's just a ton of them. Second of all, the numbers it gives in its smart data is correct. It seems like for host reads is 4.6 petabytes on all these drives so i think it's about a total of 70 petabytes read from the server right to about 80 terabytes which is still under still shows 99 percent life remaining so these are pretty good um temperatures is 38 celsius which seems hot for an ssd but realistically in this case is pretty good for those drives because they need a lot of airflow because they're crammed all next to each other and also if I start looking at some other temps, like the PCH temp at 47 Celsius, and then if I go up to all the CPUs, where just like memory ambient and the memory channels, I can see, yeah, they're not very hot. Um, and the chip chips really aren't using too much power. So I've been monitoring max temps and they've kind of sat at 51 Celsius, which is not too bad, but it's moving a lot of air. And if I get to CPU power usage, these are pulling 60 watts, it looks like, of which the core is only pulling 45, which shows you these are pretty darn efficient chips, especially for 2012. And that's basically all due to the fact that they're clocked at like 2.3 gigahertz, I think. Yeah, 2.2-ish for all cores. Once you start pushing these to threes when the power consumption really shoots up. We're sitting at like 2.163, yeah, it should be about multiply of 22 on the first CPU and 22 on the second. That all looks good. So yeah, actually nothing really notable. It's, it's an x86 system with a lot of SSDs. I think my biggest thing is, let me know if you have any ideas, is what the heck do I do with this? Using this much IO outside of benchmarks is surprisingly difficult. Um, Cause all the normal things I do with IO is like, oh, I'm gonna fire up a ton of VMs. Oh wait, the CPU can't handle it. So this box is either gonna be a NAS, which it's almost too power cons hungry for it to do that to me. Or maybe I'll try making like a land cache system. That it might be pretty good at. I'm not sure. Well, thanks for watching this little video about um, the Oracle X3-2L and the Sun F40s it came with. And subscribe for more weird service stuff like this in the future.